greetings and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at prime ng table and some of the intermediate concepts please like share and subscribe and most importantly reach out to me in the comment section for any help tips and suggestions first things first we wanted to give out a shout out to angular it's a modern web framework for all your solutions that you ever come across Right. You want to also reach out to PrimeMG. It is the perfect component UI library. Say, for example, the creativity is not there or you don't know how to implement some of the features. PrimeMG is very efficient and very bundle size low when it comes to all your needs for component UI. And Faker.js, when you don't want to use PII, don't want to use sensitive data, definitely work with Faker.js. It could give you more than enough fake values to test your APIs against. Now, what we want to go ahead and do is start the Angular app by downloading this link once you go ahead and click, or it will take us to down get as in all of our videos. And once it is loaded, we want to go ahead and run this command. Once we run the command, right, we should see our table right a table is empty right and then i had a pop-up there which showed ag grid now ag grid it was touted to be very good but we really, really got to it and we really went into the source map to see how why our app was so big we saw that ag grid was the culprit nearly three-fourths of a gig right definitely not good for the mobile experience Right. And when it comes to building an application, right, AG Grid is just too much. So we had to take it out. Right. And now we're using Prime NG Grid. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you what the bundle size is for Prime NG it is significantly small. Right. right. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is you want to load our columns. And now in Prime NG, if you go ahead, and take a look at our component here, our Prime MG component, right? All we need to provide, this is where our rows would come into. And there's no async, there's no async pipe you need. There's actually a special um, syntax, but all that requires us to do is go ahead and assign, a ver assign an attribute to a variable. Right, and if you copy and paste this code and take a look at it, right, we find that all that we need to do is assign our XHR data. Obviously, this is dummy data, but also if you want to use the HTTP client to make an XHR request to get your data, right, this is just a dynamic load, right, and all you need to do to make this static is just get re just remove this observable logic. So now, if we go ahead. And we head back to our app, right? We can see all of our data dynamically loaded. And really to express that, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little pipe here. Right, say for example, if we're working with an API that takes three seconds. Right. Right, now it takes that much time, right? We can see it's just a dynamic load and it's not that simple or it's not that hard to implement. And now we could go ahead and remove our pipe. Right, so now say we want to add our images to our columns, right? What we're going to do is we're going to provide for those images and now just a show where we place our images in Angular, right? Place them in the assets. I like to um, make an extra folder called media, right? This is where we get them from an Angular in the build using Webpack, right? It knows how to resolve the, the URLs that we provide, right? But we need to provide the correct URL, but 
but it needs it knows how to place things in the app come build time so that we can find our images where they need to go and also when we want to provide in prime mg we want to provide for a way to load these images as we can see that our images here are different from all the text that we see and if we take a look at our component HTML, right, we could use the Angular ng switch, right? So not too much new concepts that we have to learn with Prime ng. Any new concepts, right? We provide a switch, we can use ng if, right, and use our templates or containers in order to decide whether we need to load an image or whether we need to display some text. Now, say for example, in our app that our images are too small, right? And we want to have the end user click on them to be able to see what's going on, or we want to provide more metadata to the end user in an enlarged pop-up, right? What we could go ahead and do is provide for that through the event binding. Now our event binding, we can see once we go ahead and click where we have this function here, which event binds, which provides the data that we need to show in our pop-up. What we could go ahead and do now is copy and paste this code into our pop-up function, if you will. And we head back to our app. Once you click on the image now, maybe we could see we could get expanded image and then there's definitely room for improvement. Right, this is a very, very simple pop-up. And then we can also close it out, right? I actually provided for that in the code, right? So there is a lot that Prime MG allows us to do. It could be so flexi flexible, we go outside the scope of Prime MG to get done what we need to get done. Now sorting, it's very simple to implement sorting in Prime MG, right? What we have here in our Column headers is we provide for the directed p sortable column, and once that's provided for, right, our columns are now sortable. And what you want to go ahead and provide is the name of that column, right? We are able to easily provide that by entry four, but feel free to use more logic in order to sort. Say, for example, if you click the name column and then sorts by the city, right? Feel free to use ingenuity and logic to get that done. However, you can see that as we click on these columns, right, the sorting is actually working very fine. Now for pagination, right? Pagination is, say, for example, when you don't want to show all of the data in your table, you want to show it um, 10 rows at a time, X rows at a time, right? If you start to use pagination and we don't have to overwhelm the user with the space of our table. Now to implement that, what we need to do in our component is we need to provide for these attributes first to enable it, paginator is true, and then it's obviously ideal to provide for the amount of rows. And now the rows page options, right, which allows us to choose. So say, for example, I scroll down. I want to provide for 50 rows instead. I really want to give a bad user experience, right, and we want to provide for 10. I can do that. And say, for example, I wanted to go ahead and provide for two um, rows to show to the user at a time. Right, we make a simple change and now it works out. Right, and we can see our pagination is working. That as we move on in our pagination, that the numbers move accordingly, we don't get stuck. All right, we could scroll all the way to the end scroll all the way back to the beginning, which is comes by default in Prime NG. Right, and now 
if you want to go ahead and filter. All right, this type of logic, right, it's really not available. We have to go ahead and implement. We can see in our HTML, right, that this is a template and Prime Energy provides these templates. And what it does, it provides its own TypeScript functionality in order to tie in and really give you that flexibility that you need when working with Prime NG. So first, when we go back to our app, right, we could see in this header here that state, even though it's not obvious, it's selected, right? And my intention is that we are going to go ahead and filter this table by state by whatever the user puts in this global search. And once the user clicks the search button, it goes ahead and filters. And now there's many ways you could do things where you could have it, you could get rid of the search and once they click name or state, then it filters accordingly, or it could just bind to an input event and filter accordingly from there. Let's copy and paste this code. So now we can filter by and we can see it react in the app. Right? So now once I click on the name, once I click on the state, even though there is a UI changing, it also reflects in the state of the app. So now we have a filter value, right? Which is that value of the end user, right? We also want that to reflect in the state of the app, right? We copy and paste like so. Right, and, and just basically, that's just going to go ahead and grab the user input, right? And now what's really interesting about PrimeNG and Angular itself is that components and elements could be anything, right? They could be represented as a view, they could be represented as regular HTML elements, and they could be represented as prime ng tables, all in JavaScript, which allows you to work with so many features dynamically. As we can express here, right? We want to be able to have the table to filter itself out. Now that's not available on a CML element because all it is, all this table is, is a custom element. It's a HTML custom element, right? However, we need that class, right? Which is something that we would use if we weren't in Angular with the constructors and all the properties. However, we can all simplify that into one line for what we need. Since we have that using the view child and now the, um, the read property, I believe this is shorthand for the read property. It used to be read property in earlier versions. But we can go ahead now and we can actually filter, right? This is the important line, right? This is coming from prime ng table. Right? And now we go ahead and filter by the state. Right, we select by the state, let's say the state should be Missouri MO and click search like so, where we get these filters out. And the cool thing about Prime NG, if we provide for nothing, then we get our whole table back. Let us sort and let us filter. So there's like three states in Arkansas. You can filter by AK, right? And it has to be exact. So if we hit lowercase, Right, we won't get anything. Or yeah, we should. All right, that's very interesting. Right, very, very powerful. And now say for example, we want to go ahead and filter by name. Click on name and let us click the name find Dorian. It's a unique name. Right. Maybe I didn't spell it right. Hold on. Click search again. Oh, you have to click, it has to be equal, so I have to copy and paste the whole name, right, which is really, I'm not going to be able to get. So what I can do is I could provide, it. I can use the enums provided here, 
And now in this second parameter, all you want to do is convert these enums to camel case. So now I could go ahead and say starts with and now once you provide for the name, right, we can see we get one, but let me see how many names start with a T, right, and we can see we get all sorts of names, which is very, very interesting. Right, and as promised, I definitely wanted to show how our source snap looks. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to build the project. It's going to take a while. All right, so now it has built. I'm going to run source map explorer like so. And I'm going to take a look at how things look, right? So now that is better, right? So now my whole application is actually smaller than what I saw earlier. Right, and should try to zoom in, but we can see that that 500, and this is our whole application, right, is actually smaller than what we had with AG Grid. And all I see is that prime and G, which is on my left side. has a bundle size of altogether about 126 kilobytes, which is something I can definitely work with. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, reach out to me in the comment section for any help, tips, and suggestions. Thank uh you. -huh.